Welcome to our newest exhibit at the Peoria Art Guild. We have Jeff C. Curtis um, Williams here, and his um, exhibition is entitled Ride. And as you will be able to see, it is a, definitely a study in bicycles of every situation you can think of. Um, Jeff is both a visual artist, as well as a graphic artist, as well as a musician. And this is his visual art. So we are going to have a, a, a talk, Jeff, whether you like it or not, on just bicycle art. <laughs> just bicycle art tonight. Okay, it um, sounds good. And we're starting here with three preparatory um, drawings that you've done. And one of them is actually, this, this last one here, is actually part of a, from a painting that exact. we have in the exhibit. The other two are um, studies for um, different they were projects you were on. So explain a little bit. Basically, yeah. So what we're seeing here is um, I had done a cover for a Bicycle Times magazine. They had uh, they, they approached me. Uh, I was at a well Philadelphia Bicycle Expo, and um, so I was out there, and they were like, "Hey, we uh, like your artwork, and we'd like to, you know, have a piece of your artwork on the cover of one of our upcoming issues." And of course. When they were at, talking to me about this, I was losing my mind because there were two magazines that I subscribed to at the time, and Bicycle Times was one of them. So I was like, "You got to be kidding me! This is <laughs> this is fantastic!" So, so um, after that event had ended, it was maybe about two weeks later they contacted me, and uh, so I was like, "This is this is great!" So just let me know. Do you want to see a lot of my pieces, or you know, what were you thinking as far as which piece? And they're like, no, 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 no. We want it to be uh, an original piece. So that is actually pretty cool, too, because, you know, if they see enough of, if some place, in this case a magazine, sees enough of your work where they trust that you're going to come up with something, you know, we, uh, so anyhow, but this is the first, the initial sketch for, uh, for Bicycle Times. And they saw it and they're like, oh, you know what, the style we like, but we don't we want it to be a little more contemporary this kind of has like a, a victorian or kind of steampunk sort of a feel and uh, uh so they were like let's try it again and also we're going to want it to be a addition about traveling and whatnot so they wanted to kind of be packed with sleeping bags and paneer bags and like they were carrying stuff so anyhow i did the second sketch they're like oh god will that's great but we want them to be on two separate bikes because we're going to have a tandem issue coming up pretty soon i know i can kind of blather about stuff like this but i was like oh okay the the you know clock is ticking i better hurry up and get another sketch together oh and these are all just on newsprint originally these are just newsprint that are mounted then, onto canvas. And then yeah. I thought, you know, what the heck, I'd mount them to a canvas in some sort of a way. And they're kind of distressed. Newsprint just happens like that. So I was like, just go ahead and play that up, you know. So then I sent them the third sketch. And I was kind of freaking out. And they were like, no, 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 you're good. They're, they're like, we love what you're doing. We just want it to be a little bit different than the first two sketches you sent. Basically, it was like one day I sent them this, the next day I sent them that, and the next day I sent them that. So I was kind of had to move pretty quick, you know. Was did they enjoy like the sweeping lines? Because I, I they, love your gestural, and obviously this is more of your graphic um, background exact, that you can, exact. can illustrate to, to such a degree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then, then you put in these wonderful marks, and we'll see the painting in in, in eventually. A bit, yeah. But it certainly fractures the sky and makes it a little bit more. Less flat, shall Less we say. Less flat, brings an energy in, you know, that you can kind of work with like like that. So a lot of times I'll, I'll do that, and then if they want them to stay in, that's all the better. You know, if not, I can get rid of them too. But in that case, I thought it worked just to create this overall energy of sky behind them and yeah. uh, flow with the overall and sketch. And that end up being on? That was in the, uh, it was in uh, the spring. Spring. See, at one point they were called, just called it the spring, blah, 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 blah. Then they went on to, to issues later. That was still, it was 2012. They were still calling it just the spring, summer issue of 2012. So, so a quarterly. The quarter is a quarterly, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. yep gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. And as we look through the exhibit, we're going to find out that you do sometimes details of just the bicycle, the, whether it be a part or a major portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes your technique and your application changes a little bit. Again, we have wonderful lines here, but again, 
we have this wonderful, incredible background that's more about patterning. And so the bicycle does pop forward a exactly. lot. And, yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Where um, in this case, and a lot of times it's, it's not that I necessarily have something laid out in this, in this case. I just know that since it was kind of a, B a BMX bike, this PK Ripper, you know, kind of got this like sort of a late 70s, early 80s vibe, even though it's a more recent bike than that, but it's kind of got that sort of a feel. So I wanted to work with that energy. You know, I didn't have a lot of this, the sort of lines coming yeah. around before I started it. Yeah. I just was like, as I was painting it, I just sort of let it flow in what seems to feel right and so i started working up that that well, energy and it fills up that negative space really well e exactly it really does. and just like doing the 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 very loose lines mm -hmm. in the background we've got these wonderful loose lines which accentuate the tire e exactly sure. make the tire sure. right kind of pop sure. it out exact um, this is one that i really like um here we've got the figures you've got a lot of detail in this work mm -hmm. sometimes they're a little more impressionistic but this one is truly a, a masterpiece in illustration and knowing that these two figures are obviously in a strenuous bike ride <laughs> exact exact yes thank you very much definitely yeah and um what this is is an example of um i base this off of an old photograph um some of the earlier works i've done or if people have commissions where i do them off of other people's photographs mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll be off of photographs that i've i've taken but some of these you know obviously i wasn't around in the 1940s or 30s when a lot of these were you know so i couldn't but but i love the look the the, the initial photograph so i wanted to do some of these when i first started doing the you know a bicycle art so, yeah, just try to really kind of make that look of like almost anguish on their, their faces. Uh, the, you know, not, it's not necessarily that it's, um, the, the muscles are correct, but just that feel of the, mm, like as you said, the, the strenuous, strenuous feel, you know. Um, so, so that was kind of... Yeah, you can see the fatigue. The fatigue, just, just yeah. exactly, just the fatigue <laughs> grinding along. What's kind of funny about this, I had this one out at, in uh, Philadelphia one year at this bike expo that I was talking about, because I've done that a few, like a, a, quite a few years. But um, this younger kid was there with his, I believe, father. And um, the, the, the kid really liked the piece, but it was like, well... But this is wrong. He's he's pointing the wrong way, and I was like, he's pointing the wrong way. What you know? What what, what do you mean? And his dad was like, yeah. What do you what do you mean? He's pointing the wrong way. Well, he should be pointing that the car so they get out of the way of the car so it doesn't hit him. <laughs> and I was like, oh no no no! The car is there like a support vehicle. They're they're mm -hmm. racing, and so he he's pointing. You're almost to the top. You know, you're almost to the top. <laughs> so I was like, but that's very astute. I was like, you know what I mean? For the it's kind of funny how you know kids pick up on on certain things. I never even thought about that that would be a thing somebody would think but yeah so anyhow that is uh and, and basically that one is based off of Fausto Copi who was like basically a, an Italian champion and Louis and Bobet who was a French champion and back then it was like Italy and France were the two big competing you know cycling uh you know kingpin mm -hmm. countries so so i just thought that might be kind of now kinda, in uh, this one this piece which was our um announcement card mm -hmm, yep um I noticed that you've got this wonderful crackling going mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. uh, most of your things are just done superficially with just using paint directly mm -hmm. onto the canvas. And how did you and why did you decide to try to experiment a little bit with the background in particular? Well, a lot of I have on cer in certain times I do like to really delve into like a texture around. Mm -hmm. in, but the funny thing is this whole thing started... I was gessoing a canvas. I was going in this bucket, and this was a really old bucket that I had, and it basically was like cottage cheese. It was just, <laughs> it, was, it was stinky. <laughs> it wasn't this particular one, but this, the first time I started doing this, and it was just a really heavy texture, and I got it up there, and I was like, man, you know what? I, but I really started to like it. You know, I really started liking working with the so happy heavy accident. <laughs> exactly, it was a happy accident. But then after that, of course, after a while, I ran out of that. You know, I, I can't wait another 15 years for a bucket to go bad almost, you know. So then I, that's when I started to experiment a lot more with like heavy acrylics, gels, pastes, 
things that kind of can potentially like you know crack up like yeah. that. I still keep where most of the surface area. I mean, it does have some texture in, you know, in it, mm -hmm. but that where the, the main working surface yeah. of where the, the image falls, yeah. you know, kind of make sure it's a little bit flatter. But I do like adding the, the, the texture at times, just kind of gives this mm -hmm. distressed sort of a, a, of a feel mm -hmm. in, a, in a while, or after a while, so. Um, this is the painting that you had done the drawing for. Exactly. And then executed it. And as we can tell, the background, mm -hmm. the sky is very energized. Mm -hmm. um, we've got these two wonderful characters, um, obviously supporting, literally supporting, supporting one each another. Supporting right, exactly. As they're driving yep. Yep. Um, down a very narrow pathway. Mm -hmm. But, um, and what was this done for? What, the and painting this was, itself, this was, this was for, for Bicycle Times. Yeah, this was the one that, mm -hmm. Um, because after they did, they approved that initial sketch that we saw earlier. Once they did that, they're like, "We love it. We got six ish, or six weeks until it goes to you know until it has to go to press." So I I'm exhilarated, but at the same time I'm like, "Oh, I better get on it. I can't really mess about." So um, I thought that I would have enough time, but you're, you're still not sure. You know what I mean? You want to really you want to stick with it. So I I uh, just started to basically you know, pencil it out based on the, the illustration or the pencil sketch that I had done and, and let it go and just started using colors that I thought would kind of work for the, the magazine uh, cover that would work for print, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Sometimes you have to kind of yeah. consider that too in a, case, in a case like this. So here is one where I didn't necessarily get too heavy. Even though it looks kind of heavy textured in there, it's all very, very flat, uh, where this other one is highly yeah, textured. I knew that I didn't want to get too crazy with texture since it was going to be, you know, uh, on the cover. An illustration. And, an illustration. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. And here we have a wonderful... Now, tell us about titling it. This is Julianne Petalino. Petal <laughs> exactly right. Um, and so basically what this was, um, one of the years when I was out at the Philadelphia Bike Expo, and as I kind of touched on, but I'll go into that a little bit more, uh, when I started going out there, they really liked the paintings I did, and so they started having me do what would, uh, from the prior year, the bike that was ch the People's Choice Award from each year. So after this won the People's Choice Award, they then wanted me to do a uh, a portrait, paint, a, of paint, a, a portrait, portrait of, of it, a portrait of it, exactly. <laughs> and the beautiful thing, I'm glad you stopped to ask about the title of this particular one. Julianne Petalino is actually, she's a jewelry maker, but she also makes bike frames. So, um, so it's pretty fantastic, you know what I mean? That she actually has done all this. And actually, just in the, the beginning of this year, she's like, hey, everybody, I'm going to kind of stop focusing on making these bicycles and I'm going to go back to concentrating on my jewelry making and stuff. So it's kind of a cool, I'm, I'm glad you asked me yeah. about this particular one as far as the title because that's, that's kind of, she does this great work on, you know, just stylizing these bikes that, that, that she made, which is another cool thing about this, this, as I mentioned, Philadelphia Bike Expo. It's mostly the craftsmanship of like smaller independent frame built. It's not like the big the big ones where they're mass producing them. So that's also part of the beauty of why I like going out there because you see all this creative, sometimes one of a kind uh, pieces bicycle. of art, bicycle art, which yeah. is basically what she And she I'm sure does. at the and shows they're looked at more as sculptures than they are more sculptures ex pieces ex ex of ex exactly. transportation. Exactly. Um, here we have a wonderful one. This is Brussels to Luxembourg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here we have a uh, team it appears because they all seem mm -hmm. very similar and mm -hmm. dressed. Um, watering, I assume oh, they're yeah. getting water and right. rehydrated. And, and that's the thing is, you know, back in these races, like way, way back, I'm not sure the year of this Brussels to Luxembourg, but it was in the, I believe in the late 30s when this, this, this one happened. Now, of course, the people I stylized a little bit so they don't necessarily all look like they're from the, 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 the 1930s. I kind of give them a different vibe in some cases. But for the most part, they, yeah, they were stopping hot day in the water splashing around in the original photograph basically but um they're just getting water out of it's kind of this trough back there you know and then this other this guy comes out and he's like i'm gonna, I'm yep. gonna bring you some water, water some more water you know so uh but yeah kind of try to a lot of times in this sort of make it uh kind of have this impressionistic mm -hmm. feel where you know what i mean you're 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 building up but a lot of times i do like to uh work with just 
flat brushes, you know, and I just to bring, just to sort of bring the, this movement, but just with flat yeah. brushes and sort of just kind of give it this certain style or texture well, that I've kind of done And I the love years. the fact that it, this is truly a narrative. We have the, the very, we have the illustrative, we have the very detailed mm -hmm. part, and then we have the very narrative work yep, here. Yep. And then we have a couple here that both of these are where you've gone in to do the detail. And I find mm -hmm. it interesting. How do you determine which detail you're going to, which, how, do, you, do you literally take a little frame and, and go around and I, see what you, I usually, what interests you? I'll just like interest? walk around, like in this case at these, at some of these shows and I would just snap pictures after picture after picture. And then I'll kind of go through and I, sometimes I'll just delete some of the pictures and then sometimes I'll just, you know, this might've had a lot of the bicycle, yeah. but I just zoom into an area that just feels, it, it's, it just feels right to use. So yeah. it's not, it actually almost makes it easier because it's already there. You know, I'm just kind of in a way representing what was already there. Now the bicycle wasn't even this color, but I just felt like that whole yeah. color feel was what, what was what would work. But you all know? of your paintings are very bright. And, right. Um, kind of. somewhat, yeah. And and I love what with this one, there's this wonderful undulation with mm -hmm. the, the tires. And so yeah, we get these kind of, wonderful curves mm -hmm. that just kind of take you across the painting surface and off the all the way off. Just sort of like a uh, woodcut, the yeah, Japanese yeah. woodcut that would would do that the very same thing. Now, um, and I uh, actually this piece and a few others that we looked at early and we're going to look at in a little while. Um, I had these at a a show um, in Havana, Illinois, um, during the opening. It was funny because uh, maybe about uh, twenty minutes or so in, then there were people like checking out the whole you know the whole show. And on one wall, I had like a lot of my bicycle art, and on another wall, I had some of my other styles, you know. And um, at one point, this a person was just like, "These are these are bicycle parts," you know what I mean? It was kind of, and they're like, "There's a revelation, oh, thought, <laughs> right?" And it was really cool because uh, you could hear a couple of people like, "Oh, you know what I mean?" Like, "Yeah, that's right." They were like, "Oh, we thought these were kind of like ab just a you know abstract, beautiful colors and stuff like that." And they're like, "Wow, that's that's kind of cool." And the ones that I had on the wall were very, they were like kind of higher, like abstract, like really close up of parts. So it was kind of harder to tell, yeah. you know. But well, I think one of, of the interesting things too is that in every painting that you do, you actually mention or at least give us a, some sort of semblance to who the maker of the bike who was. The maker of the bike is. And of course, as I said, that also ties in with the fact that these are, are poster art for the for the Philadelphia Bike Expo for the, the the next year so a lot of times I'll make sure that that's in there and it's it's kind of cool too and the people are like oh my god well, that's and great those to who see. ride and I'm also, sure know exactly ex exactly what, makes what that it is. bike so special exactly. <laughs> and everything here we have a wonderful um, almost pop art like um, mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. um, very elongated yep. which is mm -hmm. kind of different than anything else here in the mm -hmm. show and again I love this repetition that you have with the bar and then mm -hmm. the, the circle here coming coming around like that. Mm -hmm. um, how much of, of your design um, experience do you put into laying out your work? Um, really, I don't try to I don't try to think about that too much, but I think the fact doing design work for a long time, mm -hmm. it sort of just naturally sort of yep. happens like that. But in this case, it was just like I felt like I had, you know, this picture, and of course it had, the picture had most of the bicycle with it, but I was like, you know, I just kind of want to focus, not like let just it be minimal in the background and uh, just speak to just this the strong, strong diagonal. The strong di <laughs> right, ex exactly. And kind of let it, and let it, let it, everything breathe ar around it, you know? So uh, I hope my shadow's not getting in the way too much here. Okay, fantastic. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, sometimes I'm like you know just like keep it, keep it more yeah. minimal and don't and get I too carried away. I love in your paintings that you can actually see how you've drawn little details mm -hmm. and it's it's 
it doesn't become flat really, but at the same time, it's very illustrative, but in a very good sense. Right. Yeah. In a way mm -hmm. that you're you're getting us all the the necessary details. Right. That's yep. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Now these two pieces are truly pop art. The mm -hmm. colors are just bright and brilliant, and yep. we know that they're not necessarily painted. Um, a bicycle is <laughs> actually painted that it's way. Color, but exactly. It yeah. makes us really stop and examine um, what your details are. What is mm -hmm. the what what's part of the bike you're using and mm -hmm. all of that. And that's how on these two actually these uh, are two of the more recent I mean these two I made specifically for this show and um, I did I just really liked as you mentioned that po the pop art feel you know of these two kind of working in a way together you know in this uh, hanging uh, in this area so that's that's a nice job of hanging them like this because I, uh, I I really do like that but and, and also this, the hints of red, which kind of carry over into yeah. that one, you know what I mean? It's just got this, like, kind of a, like, feel like that. But, but yeah, these are actually two of my, well, you know, a lot of times you make, when you make a new piece, it sort of becomes yeah. your favorite. favorite. At the time. You know, at, at the, the time. time. At the time. Till the next page. Till the next one, right. But these, these actually, these two in conjunction, I really do, I do really like them a lot. Okay, we're going to come over here because here are a couple of commissioned pieces, mm -hmm. I assume. They are commissioned. Um, I don't yeah. know at the bike show that there are very many dogs riding bicycles. But not maybe too many. There are, no, but not, we have not these two many. wonderful portraits. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, these actually were, were ones that I had done like a commission for a, a friend of mine, um, Jacksonville, Illinois. Um, she was managed to get both of her pups to. Uh, Balance. balance on the box and she sent me photographs she's like hey do you think you could do you know do pictures of, of my my two dogs and I go oh yeah, yeah that would be great I mean this is it, you already have a great starting point you know what I mean when they send stuff like this so you're already the energy is kind of already there you just kind of can mm -hmm. can can bring it out in this case so I thought this might kind of be a fun thing to show in the in the show also mm -hmm. you know so well and I think what's so unusual is that like here, just naturally, obviously, there's both small dogs, mm -hmm. and here you've got it, and just with the 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 way that you've laid out the the canvas, they mm -hmm. they look monumental, right. and they look very proud at what they're doing, <laughs> towering and proud in the room. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, here we have a painting, and this is um, almost a wash mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. when you were painting it and everything. The those. Um, grass here, the ground um, mm -hmm. area is a little thicker, but these are very lightly and delicately done. Mm -hmm. um, and why did you choose that? And do now, you do that often? Or just... This actually is almost like what my underpainting of a lot of my other mm -hmm. ones are. Um, so so uh, that's how they usually start when I start, mm -hmm. especially when I'm doing uh, humans. I kind of just do this sort of line work and it kind of for some reason it helps me um bring bring the the, the dimensions and everything together yeah. um and uh but i when i was through this i was going to then start to build the colors up but i just was like well i i kind of like the this looser this other mm -hmm. aspect uh where i just kind of let it like let it go mm -hmm. I did build the background up with a different color than it was was before, and then I was like, you know, I'm gonna just let it sit for maybe about a week and see if I feel like I want to add any, you know, really continue to build it up. But I sort of like the loose uh, yeah. fact that it's not necessarily as complete yeah. as some of the other ones. But I still think I feel like it still well, works and as yeah. underpainting. It, it it's truly the cartoon for mm -hmm. the, a final work. But exactly. in this case, it became the final work because you were satisfied. So with said, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really mm -hmm. and again, it really exemplifies your um, draftsman ability that oh, you can yeah. mm -hmm. you, as an illustrator, you have a wonderful loose mm -hmm. touch, um, whether it be in pencil and graphite or whether mm -hmm. it be with a brush. And, and again, they look very determined also. <laughs> very determined, yeah. But it's kind of funny because before, it, it almost was the little touches of white that I added at the end mm -hmm. that started to make me feel like, you know, this is kind of complete. But because before I added these little, these little tiny touches in places, I was like, oh, yeah, I've got a lot, I've got a lot to finish. But it, even like across the knuckle, it, it's kind of funny how just a little thing might, in your mind at least, let you be like, okay, mm -hmm. I think it's done. Now, this is also another a 
turn for me because a lot of times I'll overwork a piece. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know what? I think I'm cool. This is kind of liberating. And that is I can always it difficult. Isn't it, it is. It so is. I a guess tough... if you have a deadline um, for some kind of illustration, that maybe right. that that pushes you to the point it's got to be finished exactly, now. Exactly, um, exactly. But in this case, I think, have you done other work like this? Where you have well, not... this was actually not from too long ago. I did this in 2021, but I do want to do, I want to explore this some this... more, I think, because I do kind of like the, the this energy that's a little bit quicker and more, in a way more gestural mm -hmm. maybe. So It is very much yeah. gestural and mm -hmm. I think that's fun. Um, we all know that at the end of the day after a long bike ride that there's a real life oh, um, yeah. to the bicyclist mm -hmm. and here we have this guy who's enjoying um, some pea soup. Some split pea soup, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And yeah, his bike like, is here leaning uh -huh. against a chair. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful um, kind of warm it gives you a warm feeling and um, and you understand that these are real people and that this mm -hmm. is a, a real situation. But this is just a wonderful, wonderful painting. And this actually is was the first bicycle related painting that I had ever done. Um, it was af after I watched the movie The Triplets of Belleville and these two loves that I had, it, it you know, kind of combined when I saw the yeah, Triplets of Belleville and I was like, oh, how have you, you know, kept these two things that you love apart apart for so long? So, but yeah, so this was my first my first bicycle related painting, um, and uh, this is the only one that's in here that's oil, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everything else is basically acrylic. But this was an oil an oil painting that I and are you do you use oil? Anymore? I don't. I, just... I I love oil, but kind of really it, it just comes down to the. The mineral spirits, the turpentine, the linseed oil, all those things. I kind of, I mean, I've got some from like 30 years ago, basically, <laughs> that I just, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not going to pour this out. So I just have, so after having a couple so of you jugs. Could. <laughs> you could go back. I could go back that. in, right. But exactly, no, I, yeah. I fully so. understand. I really do. And then our last piece here is a, another uh, more gestural and mm -hmm. loose um, mm -hmm piece and it's Schwinn with the Titan um, style adjustable stem. So I guess mm -hmm. you've ex described it as best you as can. As best I can, and right. I, exactly. I assume that exactly. you executed it just like it's that. It's pretty much, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what they look like. They uh, Like during this certain time period, they use these adjustable stems that they, they, they call Titans or Titan style stems. But um, yeah, just kind of wanted to, in here again, you know, as I was taking pictures of these bikes, I was like, you know, this, I think I just want to focus in on that particular area. And this was one where, well, this concludes the exhibition tour. And Jeff, we want to thank you so very much for sharing all of this wonderful work with you. We will be exhibiting this through the end of the month. We welcome everybody to come down and visit the exhibition before you leave. You can maybe even run a, ride your bike down here. We'd be glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff, so much. Oh, thanks we a lot. Really it's been great. It's been great, really for sure. It. Yeah, and we have some great calendars and posters in the project space for sale. So stop in. Our hours have changed. You can find all the information on our website at peoriaartguild.org. Thank you.